slow. <laughs> That's, I'm sorry, but if you, my top advice would be do it because it's going to be revealing. It's going to be you're going to see things or you're going to feel things that you haven't felt before. You're going to realize things about yourself that you have never realized before. You're going to have relief on things that you've never had relief through modern medicine before because you are going to do things that your body will respond to regardless. My wife, she's responded. It's been slow, but it's responded. You are going, um, if you jump all in like I did, you're going to have repercussions. You're, you're going to have, doesn't happen to everybody. I'm not a doctor. And this is not medical advice. And this is not, but you need to do it slow because you need to basically incorporate it into your life until it is what your way of eating is. So you alter your way of eating until the carnivore is your way of eating. Um, that is my biggest advice to anybody. Hello, fellow carnivore enthusiasts. I'm Adam from Carnivore Today. And in today's interview, we're chatting with Ron from the Overcoming Carbs YouTube channel. Ron's path to the carnivore lifestyle is one of compassion for his wife. Through his journey, we'll learn that true health comes to us in mysterious ways. Before we dive in, Please take a moment to subscribe and enable notifications so you're always in the loop with our future videos. Now let's get started. Hi, Ron. How you doing? I'm good. How are you doing, Adam? I'm doing awesome. Great. So uh, we're here today to talk a little bit about the carnivore lifestyle and uh, get your take on it and your unique insight and to hopefully help others, which I have no doubt that you will. Um, so Ron, can you start off by giving us a little bit about yourself, uh, your background, where you're from, how old you are, family life, things like that. And then we'll start talking about the carnivore diet. Okay. Um, my name's Ron and um, I live in Mansfield, Texas, which is kind of in between Dallas and Fort Worth, a little Southern part of the DFW area. Um I've been married now for 26 years to my wife, Laura. We have two sons. Um, they are 23 and 19. My 19-year-old was just diagnosed four years ago as a type 1 diabetic. Oh, my wife has um, hypothyroidism because she had her thyroid irradiated. And she also has celiacs. So she's been keto now for 11 to 12 years. I think she had the procedure done in 2011 and she went keto pretty much after that. She was carnivore. I mean, sorry, she was um, celiac before that. So she's been gluten-free since like 2009 and she went keto in 2012 like the very beginning of 2012 and she's had issues ever since with weight um it's been because of medical reasons that she has her issues mine is self-inflicted uh <laughs> i don't have really a medical reason why uh, i ended up where i'm at but um I pretty much live. I mean, I was born in Texas, raised in Texas. Uh, I lived in a town south of here, um, 30 miles south of where I am, am right now, um, in a town called Cleburne. And I was born and raised there. And I got married in 1997, and we moved to Mansfield, and we've been here since 2001. So, okay. Um, we got involved with carnivore because of her health reasons and because of my weight reasons and the fact that I was a pre-diabetic at a 5.9 A1C and um, had low testosterone, low thyroid. It wasn't bad, but it was low. So she just put me on a low dose and low vitamin D like everyone else and uh, mm -hmm. low B12. And just needed to make a change so I made that change april 24th I went to the doctor april 11th made the change april 24th 
to carnivore. And since that time, as of pretty much today, I have lost 75 pounds. My wife has lost 15 pounds. And for the first time, she's actually losing weight, which is a great thing. Um, but that is where we're at right now in our carnivore journey. Cool. That's awesome. Um, so you mentioned that your wife has had some complications and I know through, uh, watching some of your uh, videos on your channel that, uh, you kind of alluded to the fact that the reason why you started carnivore was, uh, researching to help with some of her, uh, medical issues and things like that. Right. So can you kind of expand on that a little bit? Yeah. Um, she's eliminated a lot of things doing keto and of course, gluten free. Um, and I watch everything she eats and I know exactly what's going on. And I mean, she deviates just a little bit. I mean, she just, it puts the weight on her. So I was, I was getting frustrated and I needed to find answers for her. And so I started just looking, saying, okay, what about low carb diets? What about this? What about that? What about, um, low carb diets with autoimmune issues. And when I went in, I think I was looking that up and a video came up with Dr. Barry and Kelly Hogan. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sitting here watching this video and my wife was gone when I was watching it and she came back in and I said, have you ever heard of Dr. Barry? And she's like, and this was like, I think right after KetoCon or something, because mm -hmm. she's on Instagram. She follows a lot of people that, you know, do, do keto and everything. And she goes, yeah, they were just talking about him from um, keto, um, KetoCon. And um, she said, have you ever heard? Of, I asked her, I said, have you ever heard of Kelly Hogan? And she says, yeah, I, so a lot of people talk about her too. I said, do you want to sit here <laughs> and watch this video with me? and see what you think <laughs> about this and maybe we might want to try this with you and so we sat there and watched the video and uh she's like well i've already eliminated pretty much everything anyway so what can it hurt to try mm -hmm. and um i had gone to the doctor we both went we go to the same doctor she's a general practitioner but she specializes with people that have issues with uh thyroids in mm -hmm. a way, I mean, she problem cases, you go to her. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, now when I went, I didn't know how much I weighed because my scale doesn't weigh you over 400 pounds. So okay. when I went to the doctor's office, I got on the scale and it came up as 440 pounds. And I was like, this is ridiculous. What am I doing to myself? Mm -hmm. And so when you know, this was almost two weeks later and I'm sitting here trying to figure things out. What are we going to do? We need to change some things. We need to do something. I need to help her out to lose weight because she's just so totally frustrated and totally just, you know, not feeling up to herself. You know, she just wants something to be different. So mm -hmm. I said, okay, if you will eliminate these things, I will do it with you because cool. I need to do it. You need to do it, and I'm not going to let you do it by yourself. I'm not going. I mean, I want to be here for you. I want to be here for the boys, and I need to make a change because this is just not working. So right. we sat down, and we decided then that we don't have anything to lose but life to gain life so for sure we um i'm sorry oh, you're fine i decided then and she decided then that we were going to give it a shot so i went back to the doctor on may the 11th and again, I don't know if it, if it's affected me any, you know, other than the physical <laughs> side mm, effects right? of everything. <laughs> right. um, so I go back to the doctor May 11th because she wanted me to come back because she put me on a testosterone replacement therapy 
and the thyroid medication and she wanted me to come back because I was taking it weekly. And so she wanted me to come back and I came back on May the 11th. And when I got in there and I weighed, I had lost 20 pounds. And I was just in shock that I lost 20 <laughs> pounds. And she was like, okay, what are you doing? Because I know the testosterone didn't do this. And I know the thyroid <laughs> medicine <laughs> did not make you lose 20 pounds. And right. I was like, well, okay. And I was really nervous about telling her because I didn't know how she would respond. I said, well, I'm doing this thing called, and my wife and I talked about it before I went. I said, she goes, are you going to tell her you're doing this? Are you going to tell her you're doing the carnivore? And I said, well, so she has full disclosure of what's going on. I got to tell her. And I can't just not tell her. So mm -hmm. I said, well, I'm doing this thing called carnivore diet. And she lit up and she looked at me. She goes, that's what Jordan Peterson does. Wow, and, really? And I was like, okay, you know about this. Thing. Because I saw the videos of him and Joe Rogan and him and his daughter and everything. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, so you know what's going on. You And she goes, yes. And you keep doing that because wow. it's working. She says, I want to see you, though, every month just to make sure everything's okay, that you're still doing, you know, you're still um progressing that it's not doing anything to you well mm -hmm. at that point i had a pain that was in probably the left side middle of my back and she goes well let's go let's have a sonogram done just to make sure there's nothing going on inside of you mm -hmm. so i want you to come back in june and we'll talk then but in between now and then go have the sonogram she wrote it up and i went and had the sonogram and the chest x-ray because she wanted to make sure about my heart so i had the chest x-ray and the sonogram i went to her on june the 11th i think that was the day i know it was around that time um went to her and at that point i lost 16 more pounds on june nice. the 11th so <laughs> From April the 11th to you know, June the 11th, a two-month time frame, I had lost 36 pounds. And I said, okay, so tell me about the sonogram. Tell me about the chest x-ray. She's like, the chest x-ray was great. You don't have anything. Your heart looks great. And, you know, everything looks great up there. Sonogram, you have a little bit of a fatty liver. And your spleen is a little enlarged, but nothing bad. Um... So she said, I'm not concerned about your fatty liver because your blood work on your liver enzymes is fine. Your kidneys are fine. So I'm not really concerned. Let's just keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You keep on this diet. And I believe that fatty liver will basically go away. So I was like, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So went back another month later in July. And at that point, I had lost another... Let's see, that went from, I think I lost about 15 pounds at that point because now I was below 400 and I can actually weigh myself at home. Awesome. So when I got up there and she's like, okay, <laughs> you just keep going because this is the smallest I've ever been going to her. And she was like, this is crazy. You just keep doing what you're doing and I'm still on the... Um, the testosterone and i don't take i finished off like the three month supply of uh the thyroid replacement so i'm not doing that anymore but as of now i am not taking anything else. i'm not taking my blood pressure medicine i was on verapamil and also almasartan because my blood pressure was just up in the 150s and Oh, wow. Nothing was really keeping it under control. It's like 150 over, I'm thinking around 95 to 100. Mm -hmm. And I decided after losing the 70 pounds, not, you know, before I lost 75, I said, well, you know what? I'm just going to see what my body does. So I, at first I eliminated the wrapping mill because I was taking it at night mm -hmm. and um, everything was still you know, around 120, 130, over 70. And so I was like, okay, so I can eliminate that. So like a little, another week or two later, I took out the Almasartan that I was taking in the morning. And again, you know, a few days later after I, you know, made sure 
you know, everything's out of my system. I was taking my blood pressure. Again, I'm still in the 120s and the, you know, 130s. And I'm like, okay, I'm not taking this stuff anymore. <laughs> I don't need this stuff in my body. And nice. um, another thing, uh, I was really concerned when I first started this about um, gout. Mm-hmm. And um, I saw Dr. Barry's video on it and um, saw some other people talking about it. I even saw the um, Michigan uh, foot there's a Michigan foot doctor, I mm-hmm. think is his name. He talked yep. about gout and everything. Um, but they talked about that it's not really your your body has the uh, uric acid in there. Your it's a common thing your body makes and so forth. So mm-hmm. it's always going to be there. And the thing that it happens is it's like um, what did Kim Barry say? He said something about like eating meat is not going to add to your um, uric acid level any more than dropping salt in the ocean. I think (laughs) is how he put it. Because you have so much in your body already that just eating beef is not... So what is it that's causing these flare-ups? Or what is it that actually irritates it or makes it inflamed? Mm -hmm. And that's the inflammation and also the sugar and the fructose. And they said one of the remedies that a lot of people do is a tart cherry juice you know, drink that. Really? And it's like, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, I would do it sometimes and I'm like, this is not helping me any, you know, <laughs> and, like, and, but I, they had this thing they call gout. It's G O U C H. And it was um, cherry extract on something else. And it was a pill form. And I would take huh. that and that actually did give some relief, but it didn't have the carbs in it that, you know, juice extract right. had. Yeah. So I was like, when he even said that about, you know, the, the juice and, you know, that, and I was like, that makes sense, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I was like, this is something, because after I started, I was like, you know, nothing's happening. I'm not having any flare-ups. And I stopped the, the uh, I took out Purinol, and that didn't even phase me. I was up to like three or, I think the max you can take on it is 300 milligrams. And that didn't even do anything for me. So they put me on Euloric and I tried it on 40 milligrams and that helped a little, but then they put me on 80 and that actually got my numbers down. <clears throat> so I haven't taken any of that since I started this. That's amazing. So, yeah. And I'm like, you know, if you're worried about gout or if you're worried about, you know, blood pressure, if you're worried about this, I'm not taking it. And <laughs> I was bad. I mean, I got, it was debilitating. I, it, it actually would reside in my knees and my ankles. It written, you know, they say it goes to your, your toes and your fingers right. and your, your extremity. Mine would actually go to my knee and I oh. couldn't walk. And it was so bad sometimes when I was working that at this one place that I could barely walk to the, on the floor to go places or go up the stairs or anything it would kill me and i haven't had that in you know they're like don't eat the red meat don't eat this don't eat no nah, it's not that believe me it is not that because if it was i'd be crawling in bed and not being able to move <laughs> because of so right. much red meat that i've been eating lately um for somebody who had gout for i would say um 10 to 12 years and not have a flare up in the last, you know, six months almost or so, five months. No. Yeah, you would know immediately because I would it was know. right, right there on the surface. So. Oh yeah, so it, it's nice, but that's where uh, my wife was. It was, it was to get her started in a down um, trajectory was mm-hmm. important. Um. We are, I think, um, inhibited because she is on a beta blocker. So her heart rate really doesn't ever get up like above 101, 102. But she has to be on such a high dose of thyroid medication to get her numbers up that Mm -hmm. it reacts with her heart. That um, she actually gets like rabid heart rates and palpitations and things like that because of the medication because she has to take so much to get her numbers up. So they put her on the beta blocker to basically offset that. So with so that special challenges then 
Yeah, she hair. does. And then of course she had she's um I'm fifty three, she's fifty five, so the whole woman thing going on right now, that doesn't help either. You know, right. those sure. issues. So she's got that. I mean, she got so many strikes against her right now, but to actually lose 15 pounds and all those things compounded on her is, you know, we're both excited. I mean, she gets, she gets um, discouraged a little bit because she hasn't lost as much, but she is losing. Well, that's is, better than going the other direction. For yes. Sure. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, it's like for anybody that's actually, you know, fighting the same fight with their thyroid, with beta blockers or it will, it takes longer. For sure. It, it is. And we want to get to a point where her body is more receptive to the thyroid hormone. So she doesn't have to take as much mm-hmm. so we can eventually get her off of the beta blockers. But with everything that was going on in her body, we just couldn't get that point, but we are getting there. So it's not something that's just going to happen overnight. Yeah. Slow and steady wins the race. So it sounds like it's definitely most likely going to happen at some point. It's just stay in the course. Yep. Yeah. That's awesome. So in total, your, your weight loss, let's hit on that a little bit. Your, your weight loss numbers to this point um, what, what exactly have you hit in that? And, uh, yeah, just tell us a little bit about that and how long it took you. Uh, um, as of today, I've lost 75 pounds. Wow. And, um, so, I mean, I get on the scale and it shows 365 pounds now where I was 440 when I first started Ooh. and, um, I, uh, it's mind boggling to say the least. I mean, I, I, I don't remember <laughs> when I was 365 before. I know before I went in 2009, I was put on a CPAP because of, I was having, when they did the sleep study, I was doing, I think they said 900 events an hour of stopping mm-hmm. breathing. And, um, so I know I weighed more than I am right now when I did the sleep study because I can remember going to the doctor, you know, every month to check the machine and everything. And it was like uh, 390 pounds. I think I was mm-hmm. at that point. And so I'm, you know, clothes, it, it's bad because <laughs> clothes are fitting, you know, looser loosely i guess you would say and right and it's like i have some of my older clothes that i used to have you know before i gained a lot of weight you know so i've gone down from being in an almost six or wearing a a six x now i'm down to a four x nice so um i'm want to keep you know i've i've got a lot more to go in my my first go And this is why I said my family is so important is um, I made a I made a pact with my oldest son that Mm -hmm. once I match him in weight, he's going to join me and do carnivore with me. So my my why right now as to why I'm, you know, doing this and trying is I want to get to where he is in better health. And I want to do that by an example to him. His thing was that um, I'm sure he did the pact because he probably didn't think I would do it or, you know, get (laughs) out there. He probably didn't think I would actually lose the weight because my whole life I've been overweight, you Mm -hmm. know, so he's never seen me, you know, any smaller than probably what I am right now. And, um, when I, well, when I was born, he, when I was on him, when he was born, he probably weighed, uh, I probably weighed 290, 295 pounds when he was born 24 years ago mm-hmm. or 23 years ago. Mm-hmm. Cause when I got married, I was 270 pounds in 1997. Okay. And, um, so I have 
170 pounds that I gained from 97 until now in these 26 years. And he was, when my, when I stopped drinking soda in May, my wife told him that I'm not drinking Diet Dr. Pepper, Diet Coke or whatever. He was like, what? Because <laughs> 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 it was like, it was like, uh-oh, this is really happening. <laughs> uh-oh. Because, you know, I've always drank, you know, something diet around him and everything. And um, so I keep I keep giving a hard time. I keep saying, hey, I'm only, you know, such and such away from you. So I'm getting there. I'm more than halfway there now. You <laughs> know, stuff. And he's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Can you slow it down a little bit, Dad? <laughs> really? Can I at least have Christmas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the thing. I, my my thing is to get to him, but eventually I want to get to what I weighed when I graduated high school, and that was around 211 pounds, and then just see, you know, if my body will actually go any lower than that. I, it may, it may not, but I was in pretty good shape at that point oh, when I graduated. Will. It will. So it's slow. It's been only two or three pounds here the last couple of weeks, but it's still moving. Um mm -hmm. And I just know my body's going to adjust and one day I'm going to go in there and it's going to be shoom, back down, you know, it's going to drop and I'm going to go, what happened? You know, <laughs> so, yep. yeah. I haven't had this whoosh effect that I think y'all talked about on your, uh, your uh, um, keto cookout. Um, I think somebody talked about that one time. Right. About or it was. Yeah, I think it was y'all. Wasn't it y'all that were talking about the whoosh? We talked about all kinds of stuff. I don't remember exactly. <laughs> We get into all kinds of crazy stuff. But I looked at the whoosh effect is like when your body just like decides it's going to start dumping the fat again. It, right, right. Because your body, had, you know, it goes through cycles yeah. where, it, and Dr. Barry even talked about this, where you go along and then all of a sudden you'll start creeping back down again, but you'll hit what they call plateau or stall. It's not really a plateau or stall. It's just your body adjusting. For because sure. Because your yeah, body's always it, constantly doing that. Yeah. Yeah, it knows exactly what to do once you give it the right fuel. And I think a lot of times when there is that stall, it's your body replacing cells because you're giving it that fuel that it needs. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, we're going to stop doing this for a little bit so we can make some repairs here and over here. And then once once we're good to go, then we're going to pick it back up again. Right. So, yeah. But don't be surprised when you go far beyond what you think you need to be at. I did, and I'm shocked. Well, I'm, I'm, like, I'm not really going to put it. I'm not going to put it. If my body decides it wants to do more, that's great. So, I'm, but I'm not going to be disappointed if it doesn't. I right, mean, right. I'm, I was, I was the same. <laughs> I was shocked. I was like, <laughs> man, I'm happy at this, and, and I'm like 20 pounds. I went be 20 pounds beyond that, you know. And yep. I'm a small guy, so that was a lot for yep. me, anyways. And uh, yeah, now I'm, I'm way down there. I'm almost to the point. I'm like, man, am I too skinny? I'm really not, but just seeing myself <laughs> fat, you know, for so many years, yeah, it's just weird it, looking it, in the mirror. It is weird. It is weird. Yeah, my wife tells me, hey, I can see your eyes better now. Or something. Like <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't feel like you can, but okay, if you think you can, so right, right. And people think that, like, you know, my eyes are kind of squinted or whatever, that I'm, like, asleep or something. But that's just the way my eyes are. Like, this one over here, it's right. not closed. It's just, it's more narrow than my other eye. Right, <laughs> but, right. So, it's just one but of those they're, things. They're they're opening over time. Yep. <laughs> that's awesome. So, have you tried any other uh, weight loss diets in the past? Oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> I've tried. I mean... When I was a teen, I tried Weight Watchers. And that was, oh my gosh, I'm not even going to go into that. Um, <laughs> also did the low fat thing. Oh, and I lost weight on that. But you know, what do they replace the fat with? Sugar. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you were, uh, it was like in the early 2000s, I think is what it was, where the low fat craze was going around. Everything was like, no fat this and low fat this. Mm -hmm. and And it was like, Oh my gosh, you know, when you look at the ingredients on those things, and I remember looking at them, it's like, yeah, there's no fat, but there's like, instead of seven grams of sugar, it has 14 grams of sugar in it compared <laughs> to the full fat one, you know, right. it's like, 
and so you're going, oh my gosh. Well, anyway, I tried that. And then I did this thing that was going through the churches back around uh, 2000, I want to say, it was about, two, well, 1999 to 2000. It was called Way Down Workshop. Mm -hmm. I tried that and I lost weight with that. But it, it's kind of the same thing as what I'm currently doing but hmm. different because at, on the way down workshop, you would, you wouldn't drink anything but water and you could drink whatever you wanted in your meals. And then you eat whatever you wanted, but only eat when you're full. Okay. Until you're full. Mm -hmm. And you had a certain window of eating. It was almost an intermittent fasting thing. Cause the rest mm -hmm. of the time you're supposed to be spending, you know, in scripture and um, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, not concentrating on all the other stuff, but now with the way I'm eating with the one meal a day, um, it's, it's different because I mean, I'm drinking water all the time now mm -hmm. and with the one meal a day, I eat and eat until I'm full. And that's the only time I eat. And that's usually around six o'clock at night and I don't eat any other part of the day or right. anything like that. So they're very similar in that aspect. So I lost weight with that, but I didn't lose 75 pounds. Um, also did Atkins and the South Beach diet. I lost weight with them, brought it back on. Um, what else did I try? Um, I've done low carb with my wife and keto with my wife off and on and tried just intermittent fasting for a while before I decided to do this where I was eating in a six hour window. But when my doctor told me, he said, why don't you try intermittent fasting and you can, you know, eat between like a, um, 12 o'clock and six o'clock and the rest of the, or is like 12, eight hour window, I think is what it was. It's 16 hours off, eight hours on. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd eat like from 12 to eight o'clock and that would be my window. And, but, you know, that gives you almost a free reign to eat whatever you want. And that ate our <laughs> right. window. And I was like, okay, I'll do that. You know, I can, I can eat it 12 and 8. <laughs> I can eat cake for eight, for eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm like, intermittent fasting, no problem. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'll just, I won't eat breakfast and I'll just eat at 12 and I'll eat at seven o'clock. And heck, you know, I'll eat, you know, nachos or whatever. Oh, and, yeah. You know, it's like. Uh, or pizza that's great i'll take that that's no problem you know, i went to the doctor i was like 440 pounds i was like that didn't work <laughs> so, right <laughs> so, you know oh, man. Like, intermittent fasting works if you follow a diet with it so mm -hmm. um when this came around i was like i went all in on carnivore and i was going um i jumped in with both feet i mean i just jumped in and uh it it is a shock to your system it, your system just goes wow what have you done to me and you need you know let's stop this and i gotta readjust and i gotta do this i gotta dump this i gotta if people are starting this they need to do it slow i i've, I've seen so many <laughs> things out there that you know people just say, okay i'm starting carnivore and i'm gonna do it today and then a week later like like what happened to me and i was like yeah i was there i did that <laughs> Yeah, I, was, yeah. I did that to myself. I know exactly what you're talking about. And, you know, we don't do it to our pets. We don't change their food. You know, we don't right. go buy something new and just give it to them because we don't want to have the aftermath of that. Mm -hmm. you know, we've been told by our vet, you know, you know, if you're going to change the food, incorporate a little bit until you're completely over to that new food. Well, yeah. we don't even think about that with ourselves. We don't right. even think to do things slowly we're just like okay i'm gonna commit to something i'm gonna commit to something right you know and so we commit to something and then we're like what in the world is going on with me you know? yeah it's like, for sure it's like uh well, your body has been doing something for now 53 years and you think that you're going to eat wait, eat differently and now you're going to just all of a sudden just go uh everything's normal <laughs> You know, right. it's like, no, it's not going to be that no, way. Not yet. So, <laughs> yeah, diets are, I, I like the thing that they say is a way of eating. It's not a diet. It's, it's sure. a, just a, it's an elimination of everything we don't need or don't require mm -hmm. to basically 
you know, a lot of people, they reincorporate things. That's fine. But what I discovered on this and the way my body, um, what my body told me, um, I'm not going back. Uh, there's no way I can go back. There's no way I can go back to what I was doing before. Uh, incorporating any kind of plant, fruit. Uh, my body, it, my chemistry is not made for that. Right. And I know that now. Mm-hmm. And when I was doing keto and low carb, you were like, okay, well, I can have like up to 20 grams of carbs or, you know, even a little <laughs> bit more than that. Right. And I would take in a carb, but my body was like, you know, there's this uh, amygdala in our brain that they, they say that when they, were, they put in on a PET scan, that when they show them in images of things, the people that have a food addiction or um, a substance addiction to food, that they, um, that amygdala lights up when they had to do this scan, when they're showing them images. Mm-hmm. And my amygdala, basically, if you see it, if you smell it, if you taste it, it lights up and it just goes and it's running all the time. And basically, <laughs> if I don't want that to happen, I'm, I'm not going to put it back in my life. I'm not going to do it. And just like a alcoholic that, um, you know, there's some, out, there's some alcoholics that can, you know, take a sip or whatever and be okay. Mm-hmm. There's other alcoholics that you give them a sip and they'll just take over and they'll go right back into what they were doing. Mm-hmm. Um, my thought is, is that, if I introduce that into my life, if I introduce that into my diet, if I introduce that into my body, it's going to take off because it did before. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it wasn't until I got on the carnivore diet that I didn't realize that because the whole um, aspect of your brain and the dopamine that's released. And um, there's two different thoughts on dopamine as far as is it, released as a receptor to a reward and in an anticipation of a reward mm-hmm. or is it released because you did something and now it releases it um so to me through this process of eating and um eating this way i was able to, to say before when I was on keto, when I was on low carb, I didn't know how to stop because my amygdala and everything were in overdrive because it was stimulated and the dopamine was released. And the more it is released, the more that it's overactive, the more that you have that going on, your brain actually develops less receptors. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like you get, instead of just an insulin resistance that builds up in your body, you get a dopamine resistance and you, it requires you to do more to get that right. fix, more to, get that, to get that stop mm-hmm. when you're actually satisfied. So in me, in my addiction, and the reason why I named the channel Over, Overcoming Carbs is I love because, that name, by the way. Well, thank you. <laughs> I've heard, you know, different people say, put your, you know, put carnivore in your name and everything. Right. And I was talking to my wife about it. I was like, hey, um, what should I name this channel? And um, we're throwing out different ideas. And I, she goes, you don't want to turn people off by your name and stuff. So <laughs> right. uh, I was like, well, what do you think about it? Because, you know, I've overcome my carb addiction. What about just overcoming carbs? And she's like, yeah, that's great. Just do that. Yeah. And so we kind of thought it out together, but I was able through carnivore to have an off switch because I wasn't giving it something that it desired. So when I ate, I, you know, even a little bit of sugar, a little bit of carb or whatever would want me to have more and more and more, you know, like mm-hmm. a casserole or something like that would actually have different flavors and it. it wasn't just a meat or protein or anything like that. 
you just wanted to eat more. So when I went strictly to meat, basically doing the, you know, I was beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, but, you know, any kind of meat in there, and chicken, fish, you know, pork, beef. I actually got to a point where my body said, hey, you know, I've had enough. Uh, I don't need any more because I'm not really getting, in, you know, like a stimulation from this. So then at that point, I was eating to live instead of living to eat. And it dawned on me that I was able to stop without just trying to eat more and more because my wife, I would, when I was doing keto or whatever, I would get a salad. And my wife was like, you know, do you think that's, a, you know, too much salad? And I'd be <laughs> like, I'm like, hey, it's, it's below 20 carbs. You know, right? you know, when I calculate yeah. it all up, you know, <laughs> I'm still below my thing. But my whole thought was, is that I would eat it, but I wouldn't realize that what I was eating was more than what a person should be eating. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't because I was stupid or because I've never been told it was just because my brain wanted more. Right. And it took more for me to get satisfied. It took mm -hmm. more for my brain to say, okay, we're good. You know, let's get it. And I didn't realize all that. And then when I went on carnivore, it's like light bulbs started going off and sensors started going off in my body. And it was like, you know, voila. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, it, you could still get, you know, the amygdala going off whenever you see commercials. And, you know, when the food industry was taken over by the tobacco industry, and the tobacco industry did a strategic move in the 70s and 80s where, you know, people were coming down on, you know, tobaccos that they were bad, you know, cigarettes were bad and everything, you know, that, you know, and you started seeing them not being allowed to, you know, show the Marlboro, Marlboro Man actually smoking on TV mm -hmm. any longer. And you couldn't see... You know, the Virginia Slims, the ads in the, the magazines, they were just holding the cigarette, but they weren't actually smoking the cigarette mm -hmm. because they couldn't do that. Just like on the alcohol commercials, you know, you see the, um, the old Michelob commercials with all the football players and stuff, but they weren't actually ever able to drink it, but they just showed it. Well, the whole thing was, is when they had all these things going on, they took over the food industry. And they said, what's the next best thing, basically, that we can, that's the, the addictive thing? And it's highly processed foods and carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. And at that point in the 70s and 80s, our whole food, you know, our whole food pyramid, you know, was defined by, uh, you know, everything. And I have a background. <laughs> My family has a background, a farming background. I've mm -hmm. come from a long line of farmers, dairy farmers. I, um, I was in FFA and um, I showed cattle and I raised a heifer that, you know, had a calf and everything. You know, I, I went, I went, I've done it all. And my family has a long background in this. So I'm not knocking the farmer because the government basically said, hey, we need you to produce grain so that we can use it as an export. And then when those um, countries said, no, we don't need it anymore, they said, like, what are we going to do with all these excess grains? Let's make them healthy. And they started pushing <laughs> right. it on everybody. And, and mm -hmm. you know, they said, we got to get rid of the surplus. So what's good? Well, we're we'll start making all these um, seed oils and we um, start seeing all these margarines and things. It's not butter, but it's made mm -hmm. from these things that they can utilize. And on all these cereals that came out and mm -hmm. all these cereals were pushed on kids and everything. And, it was like our whole dynamic change in the late seventies, early eighties. And I was a pretty small kid up until I was probably like 10 years old or 11 years old. And then I started having all these things introduced into me. My brain started taking over my brain started kicking in and um, the whole dopamine, you know, thing started going and it's been on fire for 43 years, I would say. 
and um i you know it's nothing my parents didn't do anything wrong your parents you know our parents they Mm -hmm. were just doing what they were you know what we were instructed right and i i really believe that it was a you know well-designed plan and now it's just like we need to open the eyes of people just like my eyes were open and other people i other people's eyes have been open that um we don't need it we don't it, it made me who i am mm-hmm. those uh, highly processed foods and carbs and everything else and i don't need to basically have that going on and now that i'm doing the proper human diet and proper nutrition that i am able to overcome many things and be able to be an example for my family to be an example um to others and i you know i couldn't do this without you know this way of eating that's awesome yeah that's uh, a lot of good points you had there for sure so let, let's shift gears a little bit okay. and find out what exactly does Ron like to do in his free time? Do you have any hobbies or anything? Oh, I love playing video games with my sons. Nice. They, what, do you, what do you guys play? Uh, um, well, my, my oldest son, we used to do a bunch of uh, co-op games together. To, okay. You know, um, we like a he. He's a first person shooter specialist. He, <laughs> but I used to give him a hard time because uh, we play a game together and he'd just tear off. Man, he was gone. <laughs> and I'd be like, Wait for dad. Yeah, I was like, Wait a minute. Because he would go, he would run ahead and all these outside things would come in and start attacking me. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, Hey, you just pulled in it was like the red sea collapsing on the egyptians you know nice. it's like <laughs> you can see moses and all the israelites going through the the red sea and then all of a sudden here i am coming through and all these things are collapsing on me uh <laughs> that's the way i felt sometimes playing but it, right uh, you know of course you know i like playing you know the red dead redemption games and things like that and right you know, um, I'm not a big uh, multiplayer game person like they are because I don't mm-hmm. like uh, people coming in there and just killing me and when I'm not any good. <laughs> you know, yeah. So yeah, I'm you, not spawn, a you spawn and a half a second later you're <laughs> yeah. dead again. I was like, this is not fun. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm more of a I'm more of a Skyrim kind of guy. You know, like I like to go in and explore and oh, yeah. look around and yeah. you know where my son likes to run and gun. And I was like, Hey, yeah. did you look at that box over there to see what was in it? Right. <laughs> he's yeah. like, and he's like, what, yeah. what box? And I'm like, that one right <laughs> over here. Let me show you. <laughs> you know, it's like, he's like, I'm killing this person. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and I'll go, yeah, oh, okay. I love the games like Skyrim too. Those are incredible. Uh, the, the one I was on for a while was, I think it was called shadows of Mordor. Oh yeah, um, he, yeah, he played that game. one too. Oh my gosh, that was the first game I think that I've ever played religiously and went all the way to the end and started back over. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, and then now I'm on to uh, Witcher Three, and it's oh, those, those games are just incredible, man. Now, did you watch the series? Incredible. I, I did watch the series, and I was Were very disappointed. disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Season three was horrible. <laughs> And the fact that Cavill's gone is just, oh man, it's, oh, it doesn't make me happy because he was yeah. the perfect person for that role. Yeah, he was. He he was a great Geralt. Yeah, he yeah, was for sure. But he's supposed to be rebooting the Highlander series, I think. So now I heard about the Highlander coming back, but you know there can only be one, right? <laughs> so, if there can yeah. only be one, so why right. are they making it again? <laughs> yeah, that was. That was great, you know that that the very first one was great. Everything else after that, not as much. Yeah, right. Yeah, sure. that's another thing. I like you know, my free time is watching movies with my wife. I watch the chick flicks with her, and she watches the adventures with me. And uh, we yeah. make our, you know, she's like, oh, I don't know. And it's like, oh, we're watching Ahsoka with my boys, you know, right now. And she's like, I don't know if I want to watch it. Then she sits there and watches it with us. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Does she stay awake? Oh, most of the time. 
Okay, if nice. She, if she really wants to go to sleep, all I have to do is put a Hallmark movie on. And <laughs> about 20 minutes left in the movie, she's out. And I'm like, do you want to see how it ends? And she's like, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> she got, like, it's pretty predictable, but, you know, you, you right. want to see it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So let's uh, let's go back to the carnivore. Um, so you had mentioned that you've seen improvements with the gout. Uh, yeah. Are there any other non-scale victories that, that you've seen? Oh, yeah. I mean, just the losing of inches. Uh, I took measurements of myself in June, and we did it again in August. Mm -hmm. And in August, uh, I from the measurements I took before, I really I didn't expect a big number mm -hmm. because I hadn't really felt a whole lot. But when you take the neck, the chest, the stomach, your legs, you know, your calves, your thighs, your upper arms, and your lower arms. And when you take them all and then you take measurement and you compare, I had lost 24 and three quarter inches over my entire body. Ooh, awesome, man. And I have actually gone to a different belt. I had to move down a belt because... I haven't bought any new pants. I need to buy some new pants. <laughs> but I've lost the most in my chest, in my stomach, in my rear. Right. And um, I think I lost like 18 inches between my chest, my stomach, and my rear. I think it was like six, six inches uh, in each area. And the other ones were like just maybe an inch or so here and there. My legs weren't really because of supporting this weight, my legs have always been kind of fit. <laughs> so <laughs> right. I carry all my weight basically between my groin and my neck, you know, right, right, about, right. right up here. Yeah. And so, you know, it's going to be lost from here to, you know, down there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's, uh, I, I would say that in my other non-scale victory, was when I was able to walk up just a flight of stairs and not be out of breath when I got to the top. Nice. Before, you know, when I was walking with people and stuff, I'm like, oh my gosh, we're going to take the stairs and I'm going to be up there at the top and I'm going to look like I'm dying. <laughs> and these people are going to look at me like, are you okay? <laughs> you know. And then I was like, okay, you know what? I've lost some weight. I'm going to walk up these stairs and I want to see what happens. So I get up to the top and I'm like, I don't feel like I'm dying. <laughs> I got to the top. I was like, Oh my gosh, I can breathe. You know, <laughs> I'm not sitting there going, <gasps> right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you're, like your heart's about to come out of your chest. Like, what are you doing to me? <laughs> you know, it's like, That's I would get to my desk, you know, at work or something. I'd be like, oh, please help me. <laughs> you know, Give me an hour. Like, I'll be back. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was funny, though. It's like, why is there a def defibrillator in a case on the top of these stairs? <laughs> you know, now like, you know. I was like, uh, maybe that's for me. Yeah. <laughs> I was always scared that I was going to have to use it on myself, you know. Yeah. Just get over there. For it on me. It's like, I made it to the top and I need this, you know. It's like, so the first time I got to the top of the stairs, I was like, yes. That's awesome, man. So those are my non-scale victories, I would say. Sweet. That's, that's, you know, that's, uh, that's no small feat, you know, especially with the stairs. I've noticed that myself, you know, I wasn't like extremely overweight or anything like that, but at least for me it was. And, uh, even being at the weight I was, I couldn't, I couldn't, I, it was the same for me. Like I yeah. wanted to die at the top of stairs or anything like that. And now I'm just like, you know, Woo, skipping two top. steps at a time <laughs> and I got no problems, you know, and I'm looking oh, back yeah. at everybody else like, Come on, just you know, you know like what, what's wrong with and everything. Let's Can go. Come on, boys? you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you need to overcome them carbs. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so on on your channel, you uh, do like a weekly update on um, like carnivore uh, meals on a budget. Can you yes. kind of talk about that a little bit? Well, 
you hear about you know, how can you afford or how can you uh, afford eating meat all the time? Mm-hmm. And one of the things people you know are always concerned about is like, if I go on an all meat diet, will I be able to do it? Well, number one, I'm only eating one meal a day now, so I can you're pretty not dead much yet? yeah, and I can pretty much eat for twelve bucks. You know, one steak, twelve dollars. Right. But, you know, I got to think about my sons and my wife, too. (laughs) Right. You know, they're not, my my sons aren't doing it, so I still have to get food for them. And Mm -hmm. my wife, she's doing it with me. So she and I, she eats, you know, two to three times a day. I eat one time a day, so I still have to do all that. So you got to think about money. You got to think about, okay, how much am I going to, you know, have to put into this? Well, now that I'm not doing the medication, each month mm-hmm. i'm gonna save that money um now that i'm only eating once a day i'm saving that money i'm not eating out i mean there's n- i can't really eat out without you can eat out but i want to know what's going in me you know I, yeah. while i'm doing this when i get to a point where i've you know gotten you know where i've lost the weight then that might mm-hmm. be another story but right now, I want to know what I'm putting in my body. And I can't afford the grass-fed, grass-finished, grass, you know, um, mm-hmm. all the, you know, $19 steaks, you know, and stuff like that for all four of us. Or mm-hmm. So what can we do? So I go out and I look at all the ads that are come out on Tuesdays. And I take a look to see what's on sale this week. And I just look for the things that would fit a carnivore lifestyle. Um, Mm -hmm. And I put those in like I'll be I'm going to be doing a video today um, for that. And, you know, they're right now with the whole um, uh, the Labor Day weekend. Mm -hmm. um, A lot of them are putting ribeyes on sale. Um, You can actually go to a grocery store Market Street um right now and get 497 ribeyes and they're limited to two now there's a way to get around that too for sure i would find a way (laughs) well you have more than one phone number you know you can do each one of your cell phones do an account on each one and you can get two packs you know the two or three stakes and on one phone get two or Mm -hmm. three packs on the other phone and so forth so there's a ways around it um I know that Kroger is also, they're doing uh, 597 uh, ribeyes. And also Tom Thumb is doing a 497 or 597 ribeye too. I have to look at my thing. But you got Tom, Tom Thumb Albertsons, Market Street, and you have Kroger all doing ribeye sales this week. Now, I can go, I, I prefer to go into Sam's and get a Sam's ribeye, mm-hmm. you know, but you're talking right. twelve ninety eight a pound. Right. Versus four ninety seven or five ninety seven a pound. Right. I mean yeah. <laughs> 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 would, I can get two steaks, two pounds of meat versus this one pound. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm feeding four people. Yeah. I'm gonna go with the four ninety seven. It may not be as good, mm-hmm. but to eat meat and to be on this diet, sometimes you got to do what you have to do. For sure. And that's why I go out there and I look at them and I look at all the ads so I can let people know that. I mean, and I've even found out that other people in other areas can actually, if they know where the ad is, that mm-hmm. their store will match it, even though it's not in their area. And I thought that was, that was weird because she's like, if you can tell me, (laughs) tell me what your zip code is, because if you tell me what your zip code is, then I can tell my store and then they can, they'll honor that same price. If if it's a Kroger in a different area or so I I put it out there, your Kroger may not do it, but they will match it if you talk to them. So just think about that. You know, even if, if everybody did that, Mm -hmm. if everybody showed what was in their area, then we could all benefit around this country, you know, as far as, Hey, Ohio's has a sale today. Mm-hmm. 
hey, you know what the price are, you know, up here at the, you know, it's like your Kroger or whatever. Do you have Kroger? Do you have Fred Meyer? Yep. Kroger. Okay. Yep. So if you go into Kroger right now and you see a deal like I did one time, it wasn't even advertised. They had six ninety nine ribeyes, but it wasn't on their ad. They were just mm-hmm. doing it in the store. So I put it out there that, hey, my Kroger has six ninety nine ribeyes right now and it's in their app. Mm-hmm. And that's when the lady said, hey, what's your zip code because they'll match it so if you went into your kroger and you actually went in there and they had new york strips or ribeyes or whatever and they said hey my kroger right now is offering you know 5.99 ribeyes mm-hmm. i can go into my kroger and say hey at this zip code they've got it on sale why don't y'all and they'll be like oh okay <laughs> well, we'll, we'll 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 honor that nice so i'm like okay well <laughs> that's a good tip yeah, so that's just one reason why I do it. Just because I know people that are on a budget, they, they're they feeding like, I mean, you look at you know, Aaron Kilby has eight kids. Holy cow. You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> How are you going to feed eight kids and still be on this diet, you know? Right. If you want to keep them kind of keto or whatever, you know, where they still have a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. So it, it, if we all did it, if all of us that had a channel would just say, hey, you know, put it out there on our – notifications or whatever hey guess what in my store we got this right then we can all benefit from it they'll 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 honor that across state lines yeah that's what she said i was like really yeah she's like just tell me your zip code because she was in georgia or something okay in in georgia or florida i can't remember where and i was like well here's my zip code and she goes well they'll honor it and i was like Okay. Wow. Here it is. Here's my zip code. This is where it's at. This is what's on on the app. Nice. I think probably because she could bring it up because you can look for other stores. Mm-hmm. And if you put the zip code in and then bring it up, uh-huh. then she could show it to them on the app mm-hmm. saying, here's the price. And right. Then they'll, you know, it's a Kroger. Nice. So that's awesome. <laughs> that's a great tip. Yeah, I found that it's much cheaper for us. I mean, it's like a third to half as far as spending money from what I was spending before because you're not snacking and, oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it's just what $2, $4, $5 in a snack machine, you know, uh-huh. and then going to Starbucks. I mean, oh, the cost of going go to Starbucks, there. yeah, like one <laughs> drink is like eight to ten dollars, right? And yeah, I'd rather have a literally, eight or $10 that's how much. <laughs> Yeah, that's how much I eat in food in an entire day. Yeah, you think I'm going to buy an $8 coffee when I can yeah. have an $8 steak? No. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I don't even buy that one time a month. So imagine, you know, people that consistently buy that stuff, how much money that they are, are wasting. Yeah. And they got to realize that, know. dude, your body is going to tell you what it, what it needs. And mm-hmm. eventually you're going to go, I'm just not hungry. Right. So you're going to start eating less regardless of yep. because your body's just going to say, hey, well, whatever, you don't, you don't need to eat, you know, just mm-hmm. listen to me. I'll tell you what I need. Right. And there, it's going to take a while. Yeah. For mm-hmm. your body to adjust, but you're going to be eating less. So sure. it's, it's a very, very thing. I don't want people to not do this because of money. Because right. you will, the benefits outweigh, and you will get the money back. I mean, if you even look at uh, Amanda off of Carnivorous Me, she was talking about, did you see her video where she was talking about what she used to spend in a month on food? I haven't seen that. Okay, you need to go look at that one because she's like, I spent $1,500 on food just over the two. Oh, I have seen that one. Yeah. Where she's, the two of them were spending $1,500 right. in one month. I was like, Holy cow, I've got four people. If I spent fifteen hundred dollars in one month, I'd be out of my house. You know? right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how do you spend fifteen hundred dollars? Because they were eating out and they were right. eating out a lot of their meals. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing too, is um you won't eat out as much because you won't want to because you want to know what's going on. You want to know what's going in exactly. you. Exactly. So. Yeah, and you and you don't the whole uh, deal with like carbs and, and the sugar and whatnot is the more you eat, the more you crave. And, mm-hmm. and then it gets you into that spiral of, 
well, I, I'm not going to eat the same carbs or the same sugar. I want variety in my life. So let's try these carbs or this sugar over here. Is, you know, right. It's all the same thing. It's just done a different way, you know, and that, along receptors. with the social aspect, you know, and the mental thing you got going on. Once you start the carnivore diet, it's like you don't care about any of that anymore. No, you, know? you don't. No. no. Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly that you don't care about that anymore. And it's not that you're trying to be unsocial. Right. Or, I mean, I, I, I okay, here, here, case in point, my parents had their 60th anniversary. Okay. And I went to the anniversary party for them. This was in July. Now, I've seen a lot of people say, well, I can't go to those because they're too you know, enticing, or I may, you know, go off, you know, I may go off in my diet and try to do something. The thing is, is that you don't have to do it. You don't have to like have the cake. You don't have to do all these things. But I went to their anniversary party and I said, you know, when I was there and um, I didn't have all those things, but I wasn't going to miss out on their party because I thought I couldn't, you know, mm -hmm. because I knew when I get there, it would be enticing, yes, to have cake. But I'm not going to miss my parents' 60th anniversary just because of how I am or because right. of my fear. Mm -hmm. So I went there, didn't have any of it. You know, you had people like, are you going to have any right. cake? Are you going <laughs> to? And you're like, shut up and leave me alone. You know, it's like, um, no, I'm not going to have any cake. I'm fine. Thank you. But right? you're not going to yeah. be that rude. You know, <laughs> but you're like, right, right. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I don't yeah. need it right now. And, you know, they don't realize, you know, what you're doing or not doing, you know, but mm -hmm. you're not going to avoid, you know, being social because of this way of eating. Right. And sure. you're, you know, if your friend invites you to a restaurant or something like that, you're not going to say, no, I'm on a diet. Right. You know, you're not going to do that. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> right. You're not. Oh, I'm sorry. We'll do it some other time. Like when I'm, you know, lost 180 pounds. You know, you're not going to do that. <laughs> right. So you're going to go, and then you're going to have what you can have. Mm -hmm. But yep. um, I've watched some of Laura Spath's videos too. On she's like, this is what I eat when I go to Olive Garden, and I'm like, that costs forty dollars for what you just ate. Yeah. <laughs> you right. Know, like, I get this meat. I get this meat. I get. I'm like. Uh, I don't think so. I'd rather just not eat meat when I get home. It's just be there for right. the social aspect or give me, yeah. you know, like a piece of chicken or something, you know, just so while I'm there, I look like I'm, you know, in, being <laughs> partial, in, right. yeah, <laughs> participating in this, but I'm not going to sit there and buy a $40 meal just yeah. to eat. Yeah, you know? exactly. So yeah, you don't want to eat out, but you do, you know, you still want to be social. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So if you had, if somebody was thinking about starting a carnivore diet and uh, they're watching this video, what would be your, your top advice for them? Slow. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, but if you, my top advice would be do it because it's going to be revealing. Um, it's going to be, you're going to see things or you're going to feel things that you haven't felt before you're going to realize things about yourself that you have never realized before. You're going to have relief on things that you've never had relief through modern medicine before, because you are going to do things that you, your body will respond to regardless. My wife, she's responded. It's been slow, but it's responded. You are going, um, if you jump all in like I did, you're going to have repercussions. You're, you're going to have, that's not happen to everybody. I'm not a doctor. And this is not medical advice. And this is not, but you need to do it slow because you need to basically incorporate it into your life until it is what your way of eating is. So you alter your way of eating until the carnivore is your way of eating. Um, that is my biggest advice to anybody. And don't let money be a, a fear. Don't let social situations be a fear. Um, you got to take control of your life. You got to take control of your health. Doctors aren't going, they're going to, they're going to tell you what you need to do. They're going to give you 
advice on what you should do. They're going to prescribe you things to try to make your life better. But until you take control and until you decide that you're going to make changes, it's they can't they can only do so much they can only you know tell you to do things or advise you to do things but until you actually do something that they can't have any control over they can't control what you eat they can't control how you eat or how much you eat but you can control what you do to your body you can control how your body responds because you can give it what it needs and it's not going to be a fight inside you to basically it's not going to want things it doesn't need it's not going to desire things it doesn't need it's going to allow you to be able to think to be able to feel to be able to work like it should and the whole brain fog thing that they talk about is so true because I was getting to a point where i um, having a hard time remembering things, having a hard time um, basically just remember things I used to remember just, you know, boom, you know. But whenever all that other stuff, you know, stopped, all the other stuff that was going on, I was able to think clearer. I was able to be able to focus on things. I was able to do things. Medicine can't buy you that. There's only so much that you can get. And, you know, some medicines, they create other issues. So take control of yourself. Take control of who you are. Take control of your future. And the best way to do it, and if you're in a situation like I was, and you're, you know, 250 pounds overweight, um, just you're going to you're going to have to do it you're going to have to make the decision and nobody i mean we can tell you how it's helped us we can tell you how we feel we can tell you where we're at and how we're going along this journey and what we've experienced but hearing what somebody has gone through hearing what somebody has done hearing how it's done what it's done for them is not the same as experiencing it for yourself um I, you know, I, I didn't know that I would feel the way I feel now back in April. And I don't want to feel the way I felt back in April again. And the only way I can do that is by continuing this way of eating. That's awesome, man. That's really great advice. That's definitely going to help uh, thousands of people out there for sure, no doubt. So let's uh, let's jump into uh, where people can find you on the internet. I'm at just Col- YouTube or uh, well, I don't put as much out on Facebook or uh, on Instagram as much as I do on on YouTube, but I do um, post all my stuff to Facebook. That you know, when I have a new video come out and so forth, um, mm-hmm. you can find me at Overcoming Carbs on Facebook. Um, you're going to find me at overcoming carbs on Instagram as well. Um, I only put, you know, little snippets out there on Instagram whenever something, you know, I see something or just something interests me, but most of the time it's through YouTube to Facebook, or Mm -hmm. I'll post certain things out on just straight out on Facebook, but that's where you, you can also reach me. Nice. It's Overcoming Carbs on YouTube also, right? Right. Cool. That's super easy to remember. (laughs) Yeah, it's everywhere. That's one thing when I was making it, I was like, okay, can I get this? Can I get this on YouTube? Yeah, I can. Can I get this on Instagram and Facebook? Yes, I can. So I just, I want to make sure they're all the same. That's awesome. Well, Ron, it's been an honor to speak with you. It's been a pleasure. It's been fun, especially our, uh, discussion about the the video games and whatnot and uh <laughs> speaking yeah, of which we're, we're, my yeah. son's right next to me playing uh a game right now <laughs> so. nice <laughs> awesome we're definitely gonna have to get you on the cookout again sometime um, i would love to come back for sure and uh yeah we'll have to connect at some point maybe do a live together or 
just collaborate yeah. in, in some way, shape, or whatever form. you want to do. Um, more than open, you just let me know. Awesome. Well, thanks for stopping by, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, no doubt hear more from Ron in the future. And uh, appreciate uh, talking to you. Have a good hope, one. Hopefully, see less of me. <laughs> <laughs> right, for sure. <laughs> I don't want to say that about you, Adam, because you're you're pretty good, uh, but I want to see less yeah, of me. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Right, take care, Ron. You too. Thanks, Ron, for sharing your inspiring journey with us. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe to Overcoming Carbs on YouTube, where you'll find some really great content. We'd love to hear from you in the comments section below about your own experiences with the carnivore diet. Tell us about the positive transformations and benefits you've encountered and don't hesitate to share this video with anyone who might find Ron's carnivore journey both inspiring and uplifting. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Your support truly means a lot to me. Thank you again. Stay amazing. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.